ክርስቶስ ተንሳም ሙታን ባቢ ኃይሎ ስልጣን አሰሩ ለሰይጣን አጋዙ ለአዳም ሰላም እንግዲህ ኮነ ፍሳ ወሰዳም in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit one god greetings peace and greetings be unto you all christians now we are celebrating the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ the resurrection is the rise of our lord and savior jesus christ from the dead from the dead and on good friday on siklet we have through the prayers through the readings through the prostrations we have been partakers of the suffering and the passion of our uh, Christ and now in this season in the time of resurrection tensai as well we are also partakers of the joy and the hope that is found within the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ so in this time may, most of the time uh we have to wonder why did christ resurrect from the dead and what is the point what is what have we benefited from his resurrection and also and also what is what happened after the cross after he was crucified until he resurrected what happened to christ as some may say was god dead and absent from his throne at that time was the universe without a lord without a god as christians we know that to be false we know that to be false because in the faith of our fathers we confess that christ died in his flesh for our sake but he tasted god tasted death in his flesh in the flesh that he took from the virgin mary and united to himself but in his divinity he is eternal he did not die in his divinity but what happened let's what are the fruits of the resurrection there are three points that we can look at the first one is as we said in our greetings christos ten saam mutan baabi hail wa sultan christ has risen with great power and authority asaro le shaitan he bound the the, the devil agazo la adam and he freed adam what does it mean to bound with through his resurrection through the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ what does it mean that the devil is bound and that adam is freed what does it mean Let's start how the devil was bound. Since 
the fall of our father, Adam, humans, the human race, and the children of Adam have been under the, bond, the bondage, under the authority, the cruel authority of the devil for many years. As a sign to this, as a sign to this, when the children of Adam were born, the devil will claim them as his possession when they are in, the, in their mother's womb. And from that, from that point on, he would lead them, guide them to, to do all kinds of evil. All kinds of ungodliness. When we look at Adam and Eve in the, in the garden of Eden in paradise, they knew nothing of nothing that is evil. They didn't know anything but good, goodness and godliness. But when they came to this world, when they came to this world, they had children. And their children, the first one, Adam and uh, Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, the two brothers who did not learn it from their parents, who did not saw it, their parents doing it, Cain learned how to kill a person. He became the first murderer. How did he learn? Because he is, he was born under the bondage of the devil. The devil taught him how to kill his brother. And likewise, in the same manner, Many, for 500, 5,500 years, people have lived under the bondage of the devil. Then the devil that claimed them as his possession at birth, he would eventually, on, the, on their deathbed, he would appear to them with scary images, with torturing images, and he would torture the person as his soul, so that his soul can depart from his body. And when the soul departs from the body, he would take the body, he would rule the body in the tomb. He would lead the, the, the body to corruption. And he would take the soul, no matter how righteous it is, that soul, because it has become a possession under the authority of the devil, would go down to Seol. Even the righteous saints, even the righteous saints. This is why King David in his psalm said, What is it to you, O Lord, that I go into the, the depth, that I go into Seol? What is it to you? Does the soul that is in hell praise you? He asked. Because he saw that his forefathers have went to have gone down. To that so humans from birth to death and even after death they were ruled and under the bondage of the devil even the righteous souls even those who opposed who were strong in their zeal to oppose the devil they did not escape 
They did not save themselves from that bondage. Eventually, the devil claimed their soul. So, when Christ, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God the Son, when He came and dwelt in the womb of the Most Holy, the Virgin Mary, when He dwelt in her womb and took flesh from her flesh, soul from her soul, at that time, He freed He freed the possessiveness of the devil in the womb. He freed those who are in the womb. From that time on, anyone that gives birth after that is not affected by that. Like the old, uh, like the old times. The devil cannot claim those who are born in these days but there are those that die for that christ went on the cross christ went on the cross when christ was born the devil did not know that he was the son of god that is why he has tried his best to make sure to find out that he is the son of God. As we read in the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, when the devil, uh, when Christ went into the wilderness, the devil came to tempt him. He said, if you are the son of God, that means the devil is not sure whether Christ is truly the son of God or another righteous soul. And after that, through the Pharisees, through the, the priests of that time, he has tried his best to find out, but he couldn't succeed. Because one time he see him hungry, thirsty, tired. Another time he see him raising the dead, Strengthen the weak, strengthening the weak, healing the blind, raising the paralytics. So he was confused. So when he, finally, when Christ was crucified on the cross, the devil, and while while Christ was crucified on the cross, and he's started saying the words of the cross. Christ started praying, praying in agony, in passion to the Father saying that, saying, My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? And finally, when he delivered his soul, he said, Abba, I'm a husband of my, my old father, I deliver my soul into your hands. When he heard this, the devil thought he must be just a person, just a regular person, like a righteous soul. So he said, I will take, I will go to the cross and take Take away the soul and put it under my bondage in Seol. And take his body and leave it for corruption in the tomb. So he came closer. He came closer. But when he came closer. When he came closer. The devil. He found out that he was wrong. He found out that he was tricked. When Christ was cr uh, crying on the cross, saying, my Lord, my Lord, 
Why have you forsaken me? He was shouting the screams, the shouting, the cries. He was crying the cries, the cry of the tears of Adam and his children. When he said, I have delivered my soul into your hands. He was taking away the power from the devil to, to deliver the soul from the body and take it to the afterlife. He was taking away that power and the devil did not under, uh, understood at that time. And in the book of, in the prayer of uh, Tamir Tahawat, Tamir Tehawat is one of, uh, one of the books that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught to his disciples after he re his resurrection. It says that Did when death that is used to swallowing the souls of people on their deathbed and taking it down, that is used to taking it down to the depth, the deepest darkness. When he saw Christ in flesh being crucified, crying, shouting, the screams, the tears of Adam and his children said, He did not recognize him. And for him, it seemed like Christ was just another righteous soul. But what happened? But when he got closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he got closer to the cross, Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, bound the devil with the chains of with the chain of, with the bondage of fire. And th when he saw the divinity of the godliness of our Lord, he was shocked. He was scared. Now, the devil that have made the children of Adam cry for 5,500 years, started crying himself saying who is he that became man that took the form of man that became fully man and yet he was able to defeat me who is he he started asking who is he that take away my possession who is he that take away my slaves, the human race away from me, who defeated, who overcomes me, who is he? And Christ answered to him, I am Christ. I am Christ. And on the cross, the devil was bound at that time when the soul of our Lord departed from his body, at that time, the devil was bound. And this is the reason that we shall be joyful in the resurrection of our Lord, in the death and resurrection of our Lord. Because if he hadn't taught us, if he hadn't uh, thought, teach this to his disciples after his resurrection, we wouldn't have known it. 
we wouldn't have known it. So, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is truly, truly a blessing and a true freedom for the human race, for the children of Adam, and for the Christians all over the world. The second reason, the second reason, the second fruit of the uh, resurrection is the fulfillment, the fulfillment of the promise that he gave to our father Adam and the prophets that came after him. When our father Adam sinned and he was chased, he was uh, sent away from the Garden of Eden and to live a life of struggle, a life of thorns and suffering in this world. When, cry, when Adam was sent that, God, Adam repented. Adam cried for his sin. God seeing, God seeing the repentance of Adam, he came to him and said to him, in five, five days and plus half day, in five and half days, I will be born of the daughter of your daughters. That is why, in fact, when we read Genesis chapter 3, we find a very, uh, a very amazing mystery hidden within that, the, the last verse. We see that God came and spoke to Adam and Eve and they confessed what they have done. Then after that, they were judged, each of them according to separately. The snake was judged for what he has played in, in his role. The woman was cursed and Adam was also cursed. But right after the cursing, is we see Moses writes to us that God said, uh, Adam said to Eve, for Adam, his curse start, uh, started saying that because you listened to you, the, uh, you, you chose to listen to your wife, the words of your wife. Meaning that it's because you chose to listen to her. She is the reason, in a way, for your failure. For her, her failure, she chose to listen to the snake. The snake chose to listen to the devil. You see, it's because of that choice that you will be death, dead. You will start dying. You will start laboring and thorns and thorns shall grow in your land. Meaning that passions, evil thoughts shall spring out from your body. When the devil possesses you, when the devil puts you under his bondage, his authority, at that time, evilness, evil thoughts, whether you like it or not, it would, it would be a struggle for you. You would start growing thorns as, a, as thorn would not be comfortable for a human body. So also evil thoughts, so also fornication, so also Lying, jealousy, murder, all these sins are not comfortable to our body, our soul. 
It takes away the peace and the calmness that we want in our, in our life. So, when he was judged right after this, think about it. He turned to the woman and called her, you are, I will call you Eve, for you are the mother of the living. Why? It's because he received. Our fathers explained that it's because he received. The promise that in five and a half days I will be born of from the daughter of your daughters. He saw the virgin through Eve and he called Eve. Eve, the mother of the living. But after that, starting from that time on, Adam and his children in hell, in Seol, they have been keeping, they have been waiting for the fulfillment of this promise. So they have been counting the days. Each five days represent a thousand, half, five hundred, which means five thousand and five hundred years, which right after that Christ was born. So they were counting those days. When they counted, they were hoping Christ to save them. They were waiting for Christ. But they thought Christ was God was late. So they, they, they started seeking, they started asking him. They, they rose while they were in hell, they rose in prayer, as we read it in the book of, in the Kandasi uh, Andamta. Adam, our father, on the day of the resurrection, on the day that Christ died, he said to his children, let us entreat God, let us entreat God, so that he may remember the promise that he gave me and he so so that he can save us so he turned to his children saying rise for prayer stand up for prayer and the children the, his children that are in hell with him that are suffering under under the bondage of the devil they started they responded to adam saying Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, save us. And when they were screaming, they were asking for the Lord to save them. After our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bound the devil in his soul, in his soul, he went to hell. And when he entered into hell, our father tells us, writes to us in the Andam that the whole hell that was in complete darkness was filled with the light of the divinity of Christ. The divinity of Christ. And as Christ entered into hell, he said to them, Salam peace be unto you. Those of you who has lost your peace under the, the rule, the cruel bondage of the devil, peace be unto you. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us. May the peace of the resurrection be with us also. So our Lord, when he entered, he said to them, peace be unto you. And they said, Muslim and Fasika. With your spirit, with your Holy Spirit, they responded to it. That is why our Holy Fathers, they took, they took this prayer. They took this conversation, this prayer, and they put it in the Holy Liturgy, in the Kadasi. And we say this every day. When we do Kadasi, 
This is the mystery behind it. And at that time, at that time, Sion, Sion was completely overcome, completely destroyed. See all that was filled with darkness was filled with the light of the resurrection, the light of Christ. And after that, Christ laid those who are in hell, he led them into paradise. See all became empty. Death that have power to take the soul of people before has lost its power now. This is why St. Peter and St. Paul in his epistle to the Corinthians chapter 15, he sings, he dares to ask death, saying, I take a notica mot. Where is your power, death? Oh, death. That was feared by many. Where is, where is truly your power? Where is your victory? For now, Christ has emptied even hell, has put, has chained, has chained with the chain of fire with the chain of his divine fire, the devil, our enemy. So, St. Peter says, I take a notica mode. Where is your power? Where is your spear that you used to kill with? And at that time, the promise that was given to Adam, our father Adam, and the prophets after that was fulfilled. And we know this because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself that after his, his resurrection, he stayed 40 days and 40, uh, 40 days with his disciples. And during the, those 40 days, he was teaching them Kidan, the prayer of covenant. And the prayer of covenant includes the Kidan that we say every day during Kadasi, and also to Matawat, Kadasi Exi, Kadus, Kadus, Kadus. And also it includes uh, These are all prayers that we say we use during the church. As some think, it is not the Kadasi, the prayers that we use in the church are not made up, are not a, a, a fruit of a smart, intelligent, mind they are godly inspired and they are taught taught and delivered to us by the creator of heaven and earth himself so the two fruits of the resurrection is the devil was bound the devil the bondage of the devil was broken and the second one is the promise that was given to Adam. Our father Adam was fulfilled and Adam was freed. That is why we say, He bound the devil and freed our father Adam and his children. So what is this to us? What is this to us? What would have happened if Christ has resur uh, hasn't resurrected? When we ask this question, of course, the devil is already defeated. 
the seal has been emptied. That would have happened despite the resurrection of Christ. Even if he didn't resurrect to us on the third day. He has already accomplished that. But why did he resurrect? What is the benefit of his resurrection to us, those who live in this time and age? And when we ask that, when we ask that question, he gives us the hope of resurrection as well. The resurrection of the dead. When Christ rose from the dead, he gave us the hope that will push us forward to strive forward. For the resurrection of the dead that is to come on the judgment day of Christ. If we really think about it. If we really think about it. If Christ hasn't resurrected. If he hasn't resurrected. The disciples would be dispersed. The disciples would, would be dispersed. Uh, in, uh, in the Timurta uh, Hawat, there is a verse that says that a mutant and she was, you are a kaido, Bamotu, Lomos Demsaso. Through his death, he rose from the de uh, uh, from the dead, and he emptied Zion, hell. But he didn't stop there. He killed death by his death. What does it mean when the fathers explain this? One of the explanation is that. When Christ died, when Christ died on the cross, for even though if it, if it, even though it is for a short amount of time, for the short a short amount of time, that, uh, it felt like death has prevailed. Prevailed. This is why the disciples, when St. Peter saw the suffering of Christ, he couldn't bear to stand with him. So he ran away. He, for the time being, our father St. Peter thought when he dies, that would be it. He didn't know about the resurrection of the dead because there was no resurrection of the dead before that. If you die, you die. And also, the disciples, as we read, the disciples, as we read, in, they were in fear of the Jews killing them. They were scared of death themselves, that they start going back to their previous life. In a way, the gospel that Christ preached has almost died when Christ died on the cross. When we read the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 24, it says that two of his disciples were walking to Emmaus. And as they were walking, they were talking about the suffering of Christ. And as they were talking, Christ noticed after his resurrection and he came to them and said, why are you walking hopelessly, uh, hopelessly? How, why are you walking in sorrow and grief? Even Christ recognized that they were in grief as they were walking because when Christ died, they thought that was it. Like their fathers before, 
That would be it. So when here is even when uh, they prepared his body for burial, Nicodemus and Joseph, when they were preparing his body, they were saying, Motkan Mansi You that raised the dead, you died? And they couldn't believe it. And yet that broke their heart. That broke their heart. They were sad as well. Almost the whole world gave up. The whole apostles, the disciples have given up. And everyone was going back. But when Christ resurrected on the third day. And he appeared to the holy mothers. Then after to the disciples, that hope that was lost was rekindled. Now they saw that if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our master that preached us the gospel, he died and he, death did not prevail against him. They say, we also believe in the resurrection of the dead. Now the dead, the physical uh, death, became weak, became less powerful. It doesn't have any hold against the Christians. Now they're not scared of dying in their flesh because they know that, they know for sure that, they have witnessed that. If they live like Christ, if they work with Christ, if they walk their life with Christ, then they would also resurrect with Christ, like Christ did. So because they believe that, the disciples, the apostles, all gathered together. In 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 3, uh, St. Peter writes to us, saying that, In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he has given us a new hope, a new hope, a new uh, birth into a living hope, a new birth into a living hope. The hope that was lost was restored. The hope that was lost in fear of death was restored. So from now on, from now on, peace, let it be peace. Let it be faith and godliness. Let those things reign. Let us not be crippled by the opposition of the devil, by the weapons of this world. Let us not be crippled by the different things that try to scare us from the love of Christ. Then when we understand this, when we understand that if Christ died, if Christ preached the gospel and told us that anyone who believes in him shall live forever, and he actually proved it, he died and he resurrected and said that death has no hold over me. Now, the, the, if the apostles followed the same path and they conquered death, we also, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? As Saint Paul said to the Romans, from now on, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Who can take us apart from the love of Christ? No one. No one shall. Here is the thing. 
Let us explain this, then we will conclude our uh, sermon. When Christ, as we read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, uh, uh, Lazarus, Anaza, Kadusa Laza, he, he passed away and he went. We see that Christ went to his sisters and uh, uh, Mary, the sister of Anaza, she came to him and said that if you have been here, my brother wouldn't be dead now. And he told her, do you believe in the resurrection of the dead? Do you believe that I am the resurrection? She said, of course, I believe that people would, as you told us, people would eventually resurrect to uh, be, to either stand on the right on, or on the left on the judgment day. She, but he said, no, 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 I'm not talking about that resurrection. He said, do you believe that I am the resurrection? He said, I am the resurrection. Christ himself is the resurrection. Our resurrection is Christ himself. In the same gospel, in the, in the gospel of St. Uh, John, Christ said, I am the, the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He said, I am the life. He, say, he didn't say, I am living only. He said, I am life myself. So anyone who has Christ has life. Anyone who has Christ has life. And anyone who has life, death has no power over him. Anyone who has Christ has resurrection within him. So it, it would be like if a person holds on to a great light and walks into darkness, would the darkness overcome him? No. Because he has the great light, the darkness would fade away, start running away from the person. Clearing away. In the same way, anyone who has Christ, death would have nothing against him. This world would have nothing against him. So that is why we say we conclude our greeting saying that Christos tensa amutan, Babi Hilo Sultan, Asarola Saitan, Aga Azola Adam. Christ has risen with uh, from the dead with great power and authority. He bound the devil, uh, the devil, and he freed Adam. Salam, peace from now on. From now on, peace be, uh, let it be peace. Salam, peace from now on. And it became, from now on, it became, joy and peace it has become our life has become joy and peace may the joy and the peace of our lord and savior jesus christ and his father and his holy spirit be with us may the resurrection the light of the resurrection touch us in our time as well a lot can be said about the resurrection of the lord, our lord but for the time sake, we will halt it here. We have 50 days to celebrate the, the resurrection. We have 50 days to remember, to talk about the resurrection and to remember. But now when we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ, let us remember that we are remembering, we are renewing our hope of in the resurrection of the dead that remember that we should remember that we shall not also stay that de dead if when we live with Christ and when we work with Christ wasabat lagziabhir wala wala ditu dingir wala maskalu kuwar amin